Hi, on this video we will discuss how to make the project files available for download also how to give the admin the ability to control those files by either sorting them adding a new file delete the added file or edit the name so let's go ahead and start so first let's open the design.aspx.vb and add the following function anywhere here this function will calculate the number of working files related to this design okay on page load let's add the cell which is responsible on making the project files available for download so So as you can see here, this if will invoke the function working files count that we have just created and if it is bigger than zero or the currently logged in user is authorized to edit this design, the following row will be created. If the number of working files however equals to zero and the currently logged in user is authorized to edit the design, the row will still be created. So this is the cell prop the cell that will display at the left hand side it will carry an anchor element this anchor element has a class of fancy and this class we will use later in order to fire the fancy box plugin as this anchor button is responsible on opening something called iframe manage file.aspx and pass the design id as an id query string okay and this is the data dash fancy box dash type and everything is okay so let's rebuild let's refresh our page fine this is what we will get here but actually let's put this row under the garage row the arrangement here is very important let's rebuild and refresh now let's give the admin the ability to change the download price You can find here when you hover this cell that the edit icon will appear since this cell has already got the attribute of data-prop and as you know from a previous lesson all the cells that got the data-prop will get this edit icon beside it in case the logged in user is an administrator. So if you click here right now you can edit the value here. Let's try by typing here 20 for example and click on the save button. If you refresh back you will find that the value has not been updated because we haven't taken into consideration inside the ASMX file the price case so let's do that by copying the price case and paste it here inside the web services gws.asmx and let's find here this is our method here and I will add this case so if the case is price and we have a condition here that the admin is the only one who has the rights to determine the price in other words the designs creator has the rights to change all the designs attributes except the price so if the new val is nothing my design dot price will be equal to nothing as well so the value will be updated inside the database as null and if the admin inserts a dollar sign at the end this dollar sign should be trimmed and only the value should be saved so let's rebuild our solution now let's refresh okay let's click here type 20 for example press the enter key now if you refresh your page okay the value has been updated however if you enter 21 and add the dollar sign at the end no problem as well if the admin erase everything and press the enter key and refresh the page now the text that will be written is free as we have determined here if my design dot price is nothing which means equal null cell value dot text will be equal to free okay excellent so everything now is working as expected however if you right click and inspect this element this element is referring to a file that does not exist 
and as you might notice here this element carries a class fancy and has the attribute data dash fancy box dash type equals iframe so when the user clicks here an iframe should open inside the fancy box plugin window but at the current moment if you click here it will simply redirect you to another page so let's handle this out by going to the design.js and inside the on dom ready function i will type here at the end any element which has a class of fancy apply the fancy box plugin to it okay now let's save all and refresh our page if you click here now okay we have a fancy box here now let's create the iframe manage files by right clicking here and create it inside the root directly so add new item and and type here iframe dash manage files and let's copy the name here and click on the add button this is our newly created file let's create a file inside the js folder carries the same name and this time this is a javascript file which has the same name iframe manage files pin it here let's create also another css file by clicking on add and directly click on style sheet paste and this is our css file now let's plug the jquery plugin the bootstrap the font awesome and the jquery ui inside the iframe manage files by going into the head folder and start by dragging them let's first start by the scripts folder and add a reference for the jquery the jquery should be placed as the first file then then we can put the bootstrap then the jquery ui magnified then go to the content folder and start by adding the bootstrap the font awesome and finally the jquery ui which is located under the same base jquery ui magnified then finally let's plug the two files that we have just created the js file then the css file now let's create the table which should be responsible on displaying all the design files so i will start here by creating a table this is just an ordinary html table which carries the id of tbl files and has a class equals the bootstrap table also the bootstrap table dash condensed okay and inside this table i will create a repeater so this repeater will have the following code uh, by the way i forgot to copy these styles here copy them and paste them here and copy the repeater we have a repeater here control v so as you can see here this repeater has only one table row as an item template this table row has only one cell inside it this cell has a class of td dash file and inside this cell there is an anchor element which has a class of hyper file and has this href eval of file url that's all and the text that this anchor is going to display is a title field okay so there is a file name and there is a title field the, the file name is a href and, and the text that is going to display inside the anchor is a title and right now the current data source id is referring to a sql data source control called sql files which does not exist so let's delete this connection and create it graphically by selecting the repeater and if you go to the properties here and select the data source id you will not be able to select it graphically so you have to go to the design first and click here then choose new data source okay then data connection 
specify a custom SQL now let's open the query builder and, and go to the design file table and choose the following fields I will choose let's actually choose all the fields and put our conditions here we don't need by the way the icon URL and the design ID should be filtered by the parameter design ID that we are going to create shortly sort index you don't need it but we want to sort the records by sort index the category should be equal to null so I will type here is null this way our query will only return those records that has a category equals null okay I think that's all for now and we don't by the way we don't need the category field here to be displayed and let's click on OK next and we should connect the design ID parameter to the query string ID click next test the query by typing value of 3 ok here we go so far so good and click on the finish now let's save all and let's test this out by refreshing the page click here uh, I think we should rebuild our solution first since we have added a new file ok now let's click here ok but as you can see the fancy box window looks too wide so let's put a limit to the weeds here by going to the design.js and add the weeds property so the weeds here should be equal to 415px ok let's save all and refresh our page now if you click here ok but I want however to add an icon here in order to guide the user to what type this file is so let's select those files the, the autocad.png, revit, max and zip files and just control and drag them to the images folder ok after finishing let's go here to notepad and copy the following script and before pasting it let's first create the on dom ready function so function and let's paste inside so let's discuss what's happening here the first line is searching for the anchor elements which has the attribute href ends with dot max okay so any file has the extension max will get this class applied to it this class has the name of max file if you open the iframe manage files.css and search for this particular class you will find the following padding dash left equals 32 pixels which give a room for the background image to appear at the left of the file's name so this background image doesn't repeat and located at the left and to the top okay in a similar fashion the ZIP, RVT and DWG classes have been designed taking into consideration the width of each icon's file and hence determine the padding left value let's click here again bingo now let's see how the admin could administrate those files let's log in as an administrator and by clicking here then clicking the same icon you will get the same display so right now I will hide this repeater by typing here by setting the visibility to false okay and add another repeater for the admin usage has the following markup then place it below the previous repeater notice that both repeaters are connected to the same SQL data source and this row inside the repeater has four cells one cell for arranging one cell for delete one cell for edit and the last cell is for displaying the file name by the way we don't need the data dash category so let's save all 
and rebuild our solution okay if we refresh here now let's click here okay fine however you can see here that the last row is only two cells the first cell is responsible for uploading new files and the other cell is empty so there is an anchor here has the ID of hyper upload and this is the title if you hover it you will get a tooltip here and this is a class tooltip and this is a style and everything inside this anchor as you can see there is just a span which has a class of FA this is a font awesome FA plus and the next cell has a span which has the ID of upload files weight this is a waiting indication if you set its display instead of none this is what will happen during the uploading process and there is an input here this input will not be visible for the user by clicking this anchor this input should fire the click action to enable the user to select his files that he wants to upload okay so how did I create the last row here the last row here is located inside something called the footer template so inside the footer template I have inserted this row along with its table data okay now let's close this window and open it again and click any file of those files to download it when you click here this will give you an error this is actually a MIME error because the AutoCAD file the Revit file and the Max files are not recognized file types so you have to make the web.config recognize them first in order to do that I will go to notepad and copy those five lines here each line of those three lines is responsible on making the web.config recognize a certain file type so let's copy them and go to web.config configuration sections inside something called system.webserver let's search system.webserver this is a system.webserver now let's add our copied line here static content and the three file types now let's rebuild and test that again now by clicking any file the user is ready to download the file okay now let's control the appearance of each repeater according to the user type so the regular user should only view the first repeater whereas the admin user should only view the second repeater so in order to do that let's copy the visible equal false here as well and let's go to the code behind page by pressing the F7 key and inside the page load let's add the following code let's first add this function so this function is figuring out whether the current user is a design admin or not let's paste the function here so as you can see here let's actually import the proper namespace so imports microsoft.aspnet.identity okay so if the current user has the admin role or if the current user is the creator of this design then return true else return false now let's go to the page load and copy the following code snippet copy and paste okay as usual demdb as new entities 101 designs design ib as a query string my design then if the design is design admin this is a function here of the current design id equal true then repeater files dot visible equal false whereas repeater files for admin dot visible equal true and the opposite is here now let's rebuild okay let's now click here since the current user is an admin he will be able to view the admins repeater whereas if he logs off then return back to the same page and click here this is how the anonymous user or the regular user should view the table let's return back to the admins account and what if I click the design ID number 2 the design ID number 2 doesn't have any project files on that case this row will not appear to the user first place so if you log off 
and then return to the same page as anonymous user, this row will not be visible. This row is visible to the admin in all cases. So let's log in as an admin and click here. And if you click here now, this is what you will get, a very ugly design. So what I'm about to do right now is taking out the green upload anchor along with the hidden upload file control and the please wait indicator outside the table then remove the table and restylize the grid anchor by centering it inside the window. In order to do that, I will copy the following JavaScript code which we run on the page load. Let's go here and we still inside the page load function or as they call it, the on DOM ready function. Control V and let's read the code here. The if statement shown here is first investigating whether there are any rows inside the table except the last row which has a class tr-add files and responsible for uploading and when the result equals zero the following code will execute. And this code in brief takes everything outside of the table row here. As you know this table row has an anchor which has the ID of hyperload and there is another table data which has a span equal has the ID of upload files weight and another input as we have discussed before has the ID of file upload. So this code will take out all of those elements outside the table then detach the table from the DOM. Okay? So after it takes out everything it will detach the table from the DOM and restylize those elements inside the iframe. So let's save all now and let's click here okay this is what you will get at the end and once the user clicks the green upload anchor and select even one file the iframe should reload its contents and hence our table will return back with the newly updated file or files however at the moment we couldn't test this interface until we write the code responsible for uploading the files so so let's go to the root folder and create a new item which is a generic handler and give it the name upload other files handler because as you know we have previously created another generic handler which carries the name of upload images handler so this file is responsible for uploading only the images now let's copy this code here and paste it here and run the necessary modifications so I will type here instead of image I will type nothing if the file count is greater than zero do the following all of this is okay now for the file extension instead of jpg I will type here zip then the dwg the rvt and the max files and there is no meaning for saving the icon url and the category here will not be saved and actually let's take this sentence as the top here there's no reason for the icon name however we should add something here for the title so I will type here my file dot title equals file dot file name okay and this step saves the original file name before uploading to the title field as after uploading the physical file it will be given a unique random name inside the server's hard disk ok now let's save that click on yes and go to the iframe manage files and as a preparation step I will copy this new variable definition and the following function which reads a query string and put them at the top here ok then I will var design id equals get queue string of the ID okay actually let's make this one this ID then go to the onload function and copy the following script so at the end here let's paste our code on clicking the element which has the ID of hyper upload fire the click event for the element which has the ID of file upload one and when the element file upload one got a change it which implies that the user has already chosen one or more files to upload run the following code and the code written here is responsible for uploading the selected files 
by communicating with the upload other files handler file that we have already created earlier and by passing the design ID as a query string. The type of the request here equal post, the data, the data equal form data, content type false, process data false, and before send display the upload display the upload files with element which gives the user the indication that something is happening behind the theater then when complete reload the window in order to refresh it and after success hide everything actually there is no meaning for this sentence since the window will refresh this will have no meaning since we have added this line here now let's save all let's actually rebuild instead and click here to refresh the window now let's click here and select for example those two files here first floor and ground floor so here we go the window refreshed and the two files now appearing here now as you can see those are the couple files we have just uploaded they get a random file name whereas the title is equal to the original file names which is first floor and ground floor but actually let's trim the extension here from the file name so in order to trim the extension let's go to the upload other files handler and here on the title type dot substring as the dot substring function and the start index will be zero and the length will be equal to file dot file name dot length minus four so this will trim the last four character zero which is the dot and the file extension so it's not necessary to test that at the moment now let's handle the action of deleting the file so in order to delete the file we should go to the gws.asmx first and add a method here for deleting the file as you remember we have previously created a method here called delete image file let's copy this method and run subtle changes here so I will copy this method and paste it as the end here and I will rename this method to delete file let's uh, delete this try for the rearrangement of the image m dot category should equal should be equal to nothing now let's go to the iframe manage file dot js and handle the delete event here and paste here so the table files dot on click event within the context of hyper delete file do the following send a post to the delete file method which is this one and pass the file id to it so file id will be equal to the variable file id and i get it through the data id attribute located inside the table row which wrapping this clicked element and after the post function complete detach the current row so the current row here is this dot closes tr okay now let's rebuild and test this out let's click here now when you click here you will get an alert if you click on ok the file will be deleted now let's make sure by clicking here again ok let's add the file again ground floor to dwg and let's see if the extension will be trimmed or not okay the extension now is trimmed now let's handle the arrange event so in order to handle the arrange event i will go and copy and paste here so table files dot sortable i applied now the sortable plugin to the table files and on update do the following and this is the items the items is the table rows inside this table which doesn't have the class of tr at files so this way i excluded the last row here from being sortable okay and as you might remember previously we have already created this method so we will use the same method that we have created for the images for our files case here and this is okay because if you look at it if you search the update files list here control f control v okay all of what this method does that it accepts a file list 
separate it with commas and change it to an array and start by updating the index of each file ID so it's very straightforward and useful for both cases the image and the non-image files okay so let's rebuild let's click here and try sorting now let's try to sort as you can see here if you try to drag this row you will not be able to drag it however if you try to drag this row it's available for dragging now the ground floor is coming before the first floor now let's close and open again to make sure there is an error here so let's inspect to see the problem console delete everything then update files list is not defined so this is the update files list oh I have done here a big mistake by put this without quotations so this should solve the problem now let's click here try to arrange close then click here okay now let's handle the edit action for the edit action let's type first the method inside the GWS file so this is our method here update files title control C and go to GWS and at the end here control V so this method accepts the file ID and the updated title and then update the title then save the changes now let's copy the code that should be written inside the JavaScript file this code here control C control V okay so for the table files on click event within the context of hyper edit file do the following okay so this is the original value this is a file ID this is a span title and the input title and so on and this is a post function that should communicate with the update file title you can also notice here that there is two methods that on, key, on document key up if the key code equals 27 which implies escape key return everything back to where it was however if the key code is 13 which implies the enter key fire the click action on the save button element and the save button element has been automatically generated the time the user clicked the anchor that holds the class hyper edit file so when the user presses the enter instead of clicking directly on this button the following code will run as well so it's very straightforward and easy and we have done this over and over before so let's rebuild and click here now as you can see by clicking here a new input field has been created and also a new anchor has been created which has a floppy disk indication and if you rename this one actually let's let's test the escape key if you press the escape right now everything will return back to where it was and simply neglect any changes now if you rename this one to first floor underscore one for example and click on the save button okay let's click here okay now everything is working fine however if you click here and delete then press the enter key you can easily notice that a post back action has been done and your request has been simply ignored we have discussed this phenomena before and as a solution for this phenomena I will copy this code and paste it on the page load so for the entire document on key press within the context of form if the key code equals 13 return false simply ignore this thing so let's save all and let's try out this one let's click here and now let's press the enter key okay now let's add a new row above this row that should inform the user about the available file formats for this design in order to help him making his decision whether to buy these designs files or not so in order to do that let's go here and copy this code and paste it inside the design.aspx page 
So let's open again the design.aspx page and press the F7 key and before the last if here which is this one before it I will paste the following code the available format is a function that we should type here inside the same page control V this function simply returns an HTML markup consists of a list of span elements each element has a bootstrap class called badge assigned to it and has the last three characters of the file name which represents the file extension written inside it ok now let's rebuild our project and actually let's test the design ID number 3 now as you can see the available formats here is DWG, DWG, ZIP and this actually looks awkward because no matter how many files of the same type the design has this type should be mentioned only once so in order to avoid this repetition I will add an if statement to test whether the current files extension inside the loop has been already added before or not so let's type if not output dot contains the format then do the following and I will cut this line and paste it here okay let's rebuild this should solve the problem refresh okay here we go DWG and ZIP without repeating the DWG okay that's all for now on the next lesson we will discuss how to use the PayPal gateway as a mediator between the client and the website in order to transfer money from the client's credit card to the website bank's account in case the client decided to purchase the project's files. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please press like.